Good morning and welcome to St. David's. You may be seated. Just a few announcements. Um, if you look in your bulletin, you'll find there the, ang- the annual congregational meeting will take place uh, next Sunday after the service, so just uh, don't forget that. Um, we appreciate it if you bring a few sandwiches or cookies, um, and you can talk to someone on the board about that, <laughs> who is be coordinating that. So uh, thanks very much. Food for Thoughts continuing. Uh, Canada Youth Conference is coming. A number of things are happening in the congregation. And my own, of course, my own announcement, the official announcement of uh, the Presbytery is also, uh, we missed that in the bulletin. I, I apologize for that. Monica's not been well. Keep praying for Monica after her car accident. She's had a number of continuing health, uh, health conditions. And uh, thank you to Anne and Lillian and others who have been helping in the, in the office. But uh, Monica needs our prayers in these days. Uh, the official announcement that I was referring to it refers, I made mention of it last week of uh, the, the uh, Presbytery meeting on Wednesday, and this, it's worded this way. Dr. Dennis announced his intention to accept a call to the Ministry of the National Director position of the Canadian Bible Society and to move to Toronto to, to engage in, his, in this full-time work. The Presbytery in Newfoundland meets on Wednesday, March the 9th, at 1.30 at St. Andrews, the Kirk, to discuss this important decision. The congregation is encouraged to either appear at this meeting or bring comments to this meeting, and through our representatives at Presbytery, who are Lillian Crawford and Kathy McKay. You can also send any communication to the Presbytery on this matter to uh, me at uh, jd123444 at gmail.com. I'm still the clerk of Presbytery, and I still receive correspondence. So uh, that is the official announcement. You know, we meet at 1.30, but if you come or can't come until just after 2, uh, I'm sure it'll be fine because we haven't said exactly on the agenda where it will be. So uh, if you're intending to come, just talk to me, and uh, uh, I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Um, and Brian's away uh, this Sunday. Thank you, Jenny, for uh, filling in. We appreciate you being here. She's right there. How blessed are they whose trespass has covered the, uh, the uh, introit that we're going to sing together. It's just a couple of verses from number 17 in the Book of Praise, which is based on Psalm 32. Uh, our, both our intro and our anthem today are based on the psalm that we will be reading together later on in the service.
If you take out your liturgy, that's the purple insert with the picture on it. Uh, the Monroe family will be leading us. And uh, are you coming up here? That'd be great. They will be the one, and we will be the all. Changes coming for God's plans are unfolding even when deliberately disobey and turn away. We still love by God. God will not give up on us. When the Israelites strayed away and worshipped other gods, God provided prophets who spoke the truth. They called God's people back to worship and service. Christ has shown us the way. We too can ignore God's call and turn our backs on the example Christ set for us. God breaks our stubbornness and waiters wait, inviting us to change our ways so that we may fully know the joy and peace that is offered to us in following Jesus Christ. May we have the courage to hear, change, and align ourselves with Christ. Let us pray. Persistent God, we, we thank, thank you that you come to us in a still, small voice to provide comfort and guidance. Other times you speak to us boldly and clearly through your word, worship, and other Christians. Help us to listen for your voice and be willing to change your ways to be your faithful servants. Break into our stubborn resistance and the self-protective patterns and call us back to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Prophet, priest, priest, and king, we pray. Amen. Let us pray. And Lord, we just trust you again this day, thanking you so much for coming into your presence with our little ones, loving and enjoying you together. Help us to focus on you with all that we have. Give us what we need to know you anew this day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 706, come let us sing of a wonderful love. 706. Oh, 
may be seated. We all know that when we pray together, something happens as we seek to be in good relationship with, with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as we come again today and approach this God, we encourage you to take the time to be honest with God, transparent with God in all that's going on in your lives, that we might know God together, understand God's ways for us anew this day, and be refreshed and find new hope in the God who meets with us as we pray. With this in mind, let us pray. Lord, we come to you grateful that you are here, grateful that we can meet together in freedom in this place, grateful that we have you in common. We need you, Lord. We need your creative ability. We need your life and your light. We need you when we cannot find a way. We need you when we are confused. But as you open our eyes and lift us up and stand us in the place of grace and mercy, then we can receive anew from you. We come into that place anew this day to say that we do need to receive from you And we confess our sins, Lord. Any attitudes or actions against your will, we confess them quietly to the Lord. have not sought you with our whole hearts, Lord, forgive us. Where we have put our own ways ahead of your own, forgive us. Where we have not found time for reading your word and talking to you about so many parts of our lives, forgive us, O oh God. Draw us back to that place where we know we are yours and you are ours. Give us the assurance of pardon of our sins for all who know Christ, that we would receive from them, from you, Lord, all that we need. We trust you and thank you, Lord. And we use that prayer that you taught us, using the words of debts and debtors, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever and ever. Amen. The anthem, which is based on Psalm 32, is by James William Windsor. He's blessed whose sins have pardoned gain.
Okay, um, number 641, one more step along world I go. That's your hymn, boys and girls. 641, let's all sing it together. <laughs> Okay, here he goes. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Boundaries are important. Okay. What, what do you do with Play-Doh again? You build stuff. What else do you do? Anybody else? What do you do with Play-Doh? Help me out. Okay, this is, a, this is what you call borrowing. You give it back at the end, okay? There you go. There you go. You're welcome. Um, adults, what do you do with Play-Doh? Help me out here. The kids are there they're somewhere else. I, I they're meant to build. They're meant to build, yes. yes, And, and so did he. Yes, yes. You're, and you're both right. There's, there's no... Dis- Sorry? Construct, build, construct. That's like doing a thesaurus. You know what a thesaurus is? It's a thing that gives synonyms. You know what they are? Uh, yeah, that's what you put on your cinnamon bun, right? Okay, so so here we go. Now you know. Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm working on it. Okay, so what's that look like? The sun. Anybody else? The moon. Anybody else? What's that look like? Pancake. That's what I was thinking. But. Okay, so maybe my mind's on my stomach, and we're almost done here. So 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 I'm going to use these three fingers. Would you like some Play-Doh? Well, you were kind enough to ask, weren't you? So I'm going to give you a tiny little bit. You got some? You're making a pancake too? Sometimes we do that. It's, it's not for eating. That's correct. That's good advice, by the way. Thank you for that. <laughs> we're, we're losing the time here. Okay, boys and girls. And it's it's good to uh, it's okay we'll get it later. So so when, when when I put those three fingers in there, what do you see? You see a smiley face. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's, I never thought about that. I was just thinking three impressions from three fingers. But um, you too. You want to put your finger in there? You just put down hard. Put your finger down hard. Like <clears throat> there we go. Like that. Put your finger down hard. <clears throat> And then, and what happens is, is that way, the way that art happens from an artist's hand is we make an, there you go, you, it makes an, you make an impression in your work, and then your work reflects who you are, and that's the way God is. He makes an impression in our lives, and it stays there, and people interpret it in many different ways. <laughs> and and uh, you don't have any Play-Doh? Okay, here you go, buddy. There you go. No problem. Anybody else want play doh? I don't want to feel have anyone left out. A little bit? Yeah. Okay, you got some. We better pray here, boys and girls. <laughs> because I think this has gone many ways. Okay, so let's bow our heads and close our eyes and talk with God. Dear God. Hey, everybody say it after me. Dear God. Thank you for loving me. For touching my life. Like I touch the play doh. Like I touch the play doh. You make me, make me into your person. And you love me. Help me love you. And follow you. All my days. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys. So if I could have the play doh. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. And they're going to travel that way and do some wonderful things. And then we have a uh, a reader who knows who they are who's coming up. Dave, come on up. We'll have a prayer just before you come up. I'm a little slow with Plato today. Let's bow our heads together. And Lord, we trust you as we read the Holy Scriptures. We thank you for the privilege of reading from your word. And we look to you, Lord, as we read it to understand who you are and who we are in relationship to you. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Come on up, Dave. I'm almost done here. Sometimes playing takes a little long. Yeah. Good morning. 
Jonathan, there's one thing you can be sure of. You always make a good impression. Sorry about that. Stick with the scripture, Dave. <laughs> the, um, old, the New Testament, sorry, the Old Testament reading this morning is Joshua chapter 5, verses 9 to 12. You can find that on page 320, 320, in the Pew Bible. So, starting to read at verse 9. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you, so the place has been called Gilgal to this day. On the evening of the fourteenth day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. The manna stopped the day after. They ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites. But that year they ate of the produce of Canaan. Moving ahead to the New Testament reading, which is the second book of Corinthians, found on page 1722, 2 Corinthians, 5th chapter, starting to read at verse 16. And that's on page 1722. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do not so longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ not counting people's sins against them and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as as though God were making his appeal through us we implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God Amen may God add his blessing to that word from his holy word let's continue reading uh now from uh, responsibly from Psalm 32 that's on fi- page 829 in the Pew Bible I will read the whole psalm it just doesn't turn the page it just stays on that one page I'll read the first verses and you the next and so on blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven whose sins are covered When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding what must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you.
Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. The Gospel reading is from Luke 15. Found on page 1556 and following. Luke 15 is probably familiar to you. Starting at verse 1 to 3 for the introduction and then 11 to 32. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus continued, verse 11. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf. And kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. And when he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fatted calf for him. My son, the father said, You're always with me. Everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now is found. Let us sing together, God forgave my sin. 774, simple gospel song, 774.
pray. And Lord, as we come again to hear your word, we ask you again for all that we need to listen to you. Trust you for hearing you through the scriptures. We trust you for all that we need in our lives, that you would draw us to your very self, the core of our identities in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, Moses, uh, a long time ago, led a crowd of over 600,000 refugees. Now, that was just the men. They only counted the men in those days. From a place of oppression to new lands. With women and children, uh, some scholars believe there were, were as many as 2 million people leaving their homeland for new lands. Sounds familiar today, doesn't it? In terms of Syrians. I know... The Syrians are going anywhere people will have them, and I know it's not a coordinated movement toward one land, such as what Moses was led to lead, but God is certainly showing hospitality to these Syrians, even though there are many countries in the world which seem not to be welcoming them into their countries, such as oil-rich Muslim countries. Now, I simply make that observation. I, as I've said here many times, I'm not the judge. God is. The scriptures notes that God was with the refugees under Moses. It notes not only their following Moses and experiencing miracles and divine interventions. It notes their lack of faith and trust at several junctions and warns us who are following God today to trust him with our whole lives, with our families, with our children and grandchildren, with our friends and our whole society. So we are challenged anew today to trust God for the work here, for the leadership, for the resources, and for the people. And we get a glimpse into how God resourced the refugees in the desert. Remember, God gave them a honey nut thin cracker in the desert that came down like dew in the night and could be gathered for the people and would be nutritious enough for their needs in the wilderness. They called that cracker by the words of the people when they first encountered it. They called it, what is it? Which in Hebrew is manna, mana. It's in today's reading from Joshua 5, verses 9 to 12, we find a very short passage with a very big message. We find there that the promise of the refugees was fulfilled in finding their own land. They ate the Passover for the first time in their new promised land around this time of the year, and they saw manna for the last time. The miraculous nutrient in the desert disappeared when they began to eat the fruit, the crops of that promised new land. It was as if the manna had never happened. Now they would first of all eat crops that someone else had planted, and from then on they would eat their own crops. So what are we to take from this small passage? First, God is the one who brings essential resources to our life. We may think that we feed ourselves. We may think we provide for ourselves. But the reality is that life is a gift. We come into this life as a gift, not asking anyone to have us. Others nurture our lives as a gift and a grace. We continue to experience life as a gift and pass it on to others, including family, friends, and those in need. Now, people can get a little cocky, even farmers, who are usually people of faith, until the drought hits or the storm wipes out crops or the rain drowns them. Farmers know, and so do fishermen, that although there is much hard work in what they do, yet they rely on God for their food, they rely on God for the weather, And so do we. And the resourcing goes beyond physical food. We are meant to acknowledge as well that we need spiritual help, social help, emotional help, all the help we can get. Because we are not meant to live alone, ultimately. Now, I'm not saying that you mustn't live alone, that is, one person in an apartment or house. But I am saying that we are designed for community. And in that community, we can help each other as long as there is a measure of transparency that is, I need help, or how can I help you, or have you been served? And normally we hear those questions in a retail situation. These both basic 
Retail needs and questions are our life questions as well, aren't they? God is in the business of human relations and human transformation. And once we know God personally and say, yes, I want to know you, Jesus, I give you my life, I turn away from my rebellion to you, I want to follow you, believing you know more about what is good for me than I do, I trust you. Once we say and know we have said a prayer like that, then we move on to how we might be transformed. We are spiritual refugees, guided to the place of freedom by others who have found the bread of life, the living water, Jesus. And when we arrive in that homeland, we find many others like ourselves who have fled the land of sin and destruction, and we begin to invite others to that same place. This is natural, while still being supernatural. We invite others into the place where we ourselves have experienced the good love of the Lord, the kindness and patience of God's people, the grace of God, the friendship and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. These are not just words. These are the core values of our lives. God has made us brand new, the scripture says. And Paul calls us a new creation, like some new variant of human being. New and improved. But this does not make us better than others. What it makes us is pointers. We are pointers to the new life we have in Christ. Living faith says, as beggars point to food, so we point others to Christ. We point to Jesus as John the Baptist pointed to Jesus. As our city name suggests, St. John's, we belong to that group of people who find our mission in life and our vision in life to be pointing to the one who has given us life and hope, who has transformed us and made us more than who we used to be. And Paul uses a very interesting word to describe this. He uses the word ambassador to describe us. Ambassador. Now you know that ambassador is often a patronage appointment in our country and in other countries as well. It is a well-paid, mainly administrative job where the ambassador is the spokesperson for the foreign country. It is a highly respected role. The person taking this position is supposed to be able to comment on the most difficult and trying of circumstances in diplomatic, calm, and creative ways. Scripture says you are the ambassadors for God. You. You are an ambassador for God. Me too. So how's the job going? Are you enjoying the foreign country in which you're living? Do you remember daily that you are here to represent heaven, the presence of God, the power and wisdom of God in whatever circumstance you find yourself. Whether that be a party conversation to taking out the garbage and seeing the neighbor, from complicated politics to family situations. We are the ones who will be pointing people to God or pointing people away from God. Now that sounds scary, doesn't it? Remember the Holy Spirit inside you can help you bear your infirmities and weaknesses while using God's strengths and gifts inside you. Yet Paul wants us to know that when opportunities do come our way, we need to point others to the Lord, not only with words, but with actions as well. And we know these opportunities can be missed, yet they can be wonderful. We treat our lives as a means of grace for others. God makes his appeal through us, the scripture says. The Holy Spirit uses us to draw others to God. It is a holy work, a priestly work. And you and I have this high privilege. We just need to remember that Christ has done the work, and it is his country we represent. And when we go wrong, it's not the end. It's time for the confession of sins, just as David sings in Psalm 32. When I kept my sin to myself... It ate away my insides like acid. But when I confess my sin to God and others, I am free. And I can be healed. And I can have the courage to ask forgiveness of others. Some of us are like that older son in the parable of the, of the good father. You know, sometimes we call that parable the parable of the prodigal son. Usually that's what the headline says. I think the NIV has the lost son. But that title is merely an emphasis on who who is the main character in that story. 
I believe it is the good father. The good father lets his son go, even though he knew he was probably going to waste the investment money he gave to him. The good father still gave him the money and wished him well and sent him on his way. The good father never gave up looking for his child when he expected him to be back. He never stopped praying and wishing him well, even though and even through the younger son's sexual sin and other sins. The good father received him back. And when he came back emaciated from working and starving on a pig farm, probably as low as you could go in the Jewish culture of the day, but meanwhile, back at the farm, the older son was continuing in his bitterness and resentment for the farm responsibilities that he had. He may have secretly wanted to leave long ago. We don't know, but never had the courage to do what the younger son did, quote-unquote. He hated his father, even though he did what his father told him to do. And the older son was in as much bondage as the younger in this story. Neither one of them had heard the good father's communication that he would gladly give, or give either one of them everything he had. And I think deep down when we read this story, we know it's about God. We know that the sons are two types of persons. One, the one who is obviously in need because he's committed crimes or having committed grave exterior sins that everyone knows about. The older son represents those of us who may appear to have it all together on the outside, but have many issues rebellious and dying on the inside. God wants to meet those who are rebellious and obviously needy as well as those of us who are rebellious on the inside but not so obviously needy. We all need God in the loving arms of the Good Father, the ring of godly integrity, the robe of acceptance and affirmation. To this God and this Good Father, we humbly turn again and pray. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you because we need you. Sometimes we don't think we're important enough in your economy to be called ambassadors, and yet that is what your servant Paul calls us. So we receive that name. We receive that position and that post. And we ask you to help us. Help us with our words and our attitudes and our actions. We trust you new in Jesus' name. Amen. We give to God our guest tithes and offerings that the ushers would come forward and would take up our offering at this time. back to you a portion of our lives prosperity to 
just say that we love you. We want to be involved with your work here in this city, in this church. We want your those who are in need to be fed and helped. And we look to you, Lord, for all that can happen from your people as we seek to be your hands and your feet in this hurting world. We trust you anew for this to take place not only here in St. John's, but across Newfoundland and Labrador, across Canada and to the ends of the earth. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Our closing prayers always uh, bring us into a place of thanksgiving and intercession. That means we uh, continue to say thank you to the Lord. And uh, we ask for God's care and intercession on those whom God brings to our minds. And in that way we pray the prayers of the people together. So I encourage you to stay focused in that way as we pray together and as uh, I lead you in this time. With this in mind, let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, we do give you thanks because you are the author of life and we do receive our, our lives and our health as a gift from your hand. Lord, we don't take these things for granted. We trust you anew this day and place these gifts of life and health back in your hands. Lord, we do so not only for ourselves, but we also do so for those who are close to us. And we mention them now by name to you. And we also bring up their spiritual needs and whatever you would like us to bring forward on their behalf. So we bring our gratitude to you and our intercessions for them together at this time. mentioned to you, We're trusting you for the people who are with us today, sitting up around us, in front of us, and behind us, on our left and on our right. Help them in their spiritual walk with you. Help them, give them what they need in these days to follow you, to be an ambassador for you. We trust you, Lord, with that, for what that means. We know we need your help. Keep us traveling along with you and close to you. And Lord, as we give you back our church, our congregation, our future, the leadership of it, we recognize that each of our voices is one in the choir, one in the chorus, which is yours in this community. And so we trust you anew for this journey. And we look to you, Lord, for what it looks like. We ask for your, your mercy and your care over the process coming soon to choose, choose another leadership in this place. And we look to you and ask for your mercy and care over us. We thank you for the gift, and we trust you anew with it. And we thank you for this time together in Jesus' name. Amen. My Shepherd is the King of Love is, is six verses, which is a little bit long right now. Let's sing one, two, and six. Six hundred and ninety-one.
We do have a coffee time together. If you can stay, it would be great to catch up with you down in the hall just down through this door. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the friendship and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.